Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm Mike B coming at you from Mommy's Basement with some things that I do and have done to Mills and Nagant rifles to make them a little bit more user-friendly and accurate as far as shooting. Like we're talking going from 3 MOA to half MOA using a standard like refurbished 9130 or, I mean this guy didn't have any accuracy issues, but uh, it's a nice Chinese Type 53 Albanian, Albanian reissue. That's why it's in such great shape. Um, actually, one of the most accurate Mosins I own, just right out of the gate. Amazing, but we'll do that in another video. So, I've got three things that I've done, and I still do if I acquire a new Mosin, Nagant rifle, that bring this thing from a garbage rod, if you haven't seen that video, to an actual rifle that you can shoot competition with damn near. And this is not just me that's done this. I've A lot of my friends do this, although we won't say it, because I'm going to give you a trigger warning, slash disclaimer, slash whatever the fuck you want to call it. It involves altering the gun slightly in one respect. That's not reversible. Um, um, before we get started with that, I am not a gunsmith. This is a disclaimer. I'm not a gunsmith. I am not telling you to do this or that it is safe. This is simply what I do and have done. And I haven't had issues yet, but that doesn't mean that I'm encouraging anybody to do this. This is for educational purposes only. You are responsible for your actions. If you're a communist, you won't understand what those words mean. But if you are actually competent and, you know, have a decent amount of brain cells flowing in your brain, you'll understand what that means. You are responsible for your actions, not me. That being said, we're going to get started. I'm going to just get that one out of the way quickly. Um, also, a little, little bit of a history. I am a purist when it comes to firearms, military firearms. I don't like altering them in any way, shape, or form. This little thing does not really, in my opinion, alter it that much and honestly if you go to sell it nobody's going to know that you've done this so the first thing i do to make this a little bit more user friendly is i'm not a fan of the the stock mosin nagant bolt where you have to go and then there's that other click right there right that slows me down shooting even if you're i mean this one's not bad it's pretty worn out but you get that where you have to go up and back and it's that click and it just makes it a little bit less smooth than say K98 or um, an Enfield or something like that. So what I do, I've done it on this one, is well, I'm gonna take out the bolt here and show you a comparison. And this is something, again, this is the part that I'm not advising that you do. I'm just telling you what I have done. Come on, baby. All right. So we're gonna start out, I'm just gonna show you really quickly what the bolt looks like or what the, I don't know what the hell this is called, the sear, the, the no, it's not the sear. Anyway, so there's a little section in the Mosin Nagant bolt. And I, they're cat scratches, don't worry about that, I'm not a junkie. Um, I was messing with the cat, I deserve that. And I deserve that one too, and all these other scars from messing with the cats. So you'll see right here, there's a little ridge that that catches on, right? And that is what causes the, the click. You can hear that and see that, right? So what I figured out to do, and what I did do, and kind of tested it out back when these were you know, 80 bucks a pop, is here's the bolt from the 9130, the uh, one that I have tinkered with, is I took the rear part right here, and I actually took it to a grinding wheel. You can use a file too if you're nice and delicate with it. And you see how there isn't that ridge, like there is, here, let me get this other one, on that one. Okay, this is gonna be fun, all right. So you'll see right there, God, I'm really shaky. I wanted to be a surgeon, but they wouldn't accept me. Can you guess why? Um, anyway, so you see that I just flattened out the back and the one on the left, so it doesn't actually catch on that little that little rivet or whatever the hell you call it. I'm not, I don't care about the technical term for the sake of this video, um, but I just wanna show you, I'll try to get this bolt back together in, a, in an expeditious manner, um, that it actually makes the bolt quite smooth and a little bit faster to operate. Um, I'll show you, I'll just throw this one back in the 9130. So with this one, you don't have that click. It pops up and it pops. So you don't have that extra you know, step where you have to go like that. It pops up just like a lot of other bolt guns do. And that is what I did to kind of modify it. Now, you're not taking you're, you're taking barely any metal off. It's just that little, that little tiny, what if you want to call it a nipple or something right there, where you're just taking that off barely and just making it even. You don't even have to touch the this part of it, just the rear one. You're just taking that little tooth and evening it out a little bit. Don't take any more metal off than you need to. I would advise if you are going to do this, again, I'm not telling you to do it, 
to just take it take your time with it and you know the less metal that you have to take off of that little area the better obviously now I have actually sold 9130s that I did that to and they could not tell the difference it doesn't really diminish the value because it's the collector's value that's something that they really aren't going to look at unless they watch this video but to me I would have zero problems buying a 9130 or any Mosin Nagant that had that done to it I would actually favor it now another thing that I've done to here hold on I gotta grab another rifle Another thing that I've done that involves filing down metal, this is just a personal preference thing. So this is on my M44, and I got a bunch of surface rust on it. Don't have to, don't have to whine about it in the comments. So if you'd see on the regular on the regular sights, the front sight post is pretty. Uh, how the hell am I going to do this? Yeah, it's pretty square. The tip is very square, so that makes it pretty hard to shoot at distance because it covers up your target at anything past about 450, 500 yards. So what I did is, if you can see that, I just barely. Yeah, I made it into a point. And this is actually something I saw on a bunch of refurbished 9130s straight out of the crate. And I actually got one that had this done to it, probably by somebody in the armory or the, the soldier did it and they just threw it in, in a crate. It actually makes it a lot easier to see. Again, not advising that you do that because unless you want to get a new front sight globe that doesn't match the rest of the rifle and put that on and all that stuff, it is, it is permanently altering that particular part of the rifle. So... I'd advise that you don't do that, but if you're going to, that's what I did. So, I'm going to get this done really quick. Now, another big important thing that I was talking about in the garbage rod video was that a lot of times when you shoot, especially lacquered ammunition and even the copper wash stuff, the rounds will start getting stuck in the chamber after, say, 10, 15, or how, enter, enter X amount of rounds here for your particular rifle. The reason for that is because these were stacked or soaked in what we call cosmoline. It's just preservative grease, packing grease. It's not all cosmoline. There was variations of it. You can see this one's got a light layer on it. So I don't actually think I've shot this one, to tell you the truth. But this is what I do for all of my Mosin Nagants that I get. Is you take a brush, a bore brush, like a 30 caliber or even bigger. I, the ones that come in the uh, Air 15 cleaning kits, the bore brushes, are perfectly sized and shaped and everything for this. Now... All you do is just, I mean, obviously take the bolt out. And if you've got something to attach this, this apparatus, or I just use a SIG, you know, Swiss SIG cleaning kit. But um, if you've got something to put it on a drill, this makes this process a hell of a lot quicker and easier, but you can do it by hand. So you take this gigantic brush, and all you're doing is you're just going to be turning this thing, and you're going to be cleaning and polishing the shit out of the chamber while not scratching it because you either have a brass, <clears throat> bronze, or copper brush. And um, that you just get that get that chamber so clean and so empty of grease, um, run patches through it, whatever. Oh yeah, the, the magical hair floating in the in the scene. Everybody's gonna bring that up too. But hey, whatever. Um, so anyway, get that chamber clean and as, as polished as you possibly can. And I can almost guarantee you. Again, I'm, it is what it is. It's, your mileage may vary, but I can almost guarantee because I've experienced it that you'll have very few sticking rounds, as they, as they call it, as it heats up. So that's a huge reason for that. If you still have sticking rounds, there might be a burr in there. Take it to a gunsmith, all that stuff. But this is a nice, easy method because most of you guys have this on hand. Now, the final thing I'm actually going to talk about to make your to take your Mosin Nagant from you know an average infantry rifle to the next level. Um, a friend of mine, uh, we've been friends on the gun forum for years, um, about, about 10 years now or 9 years. His name's Brian, and he actually came out with a copy or kind of replica of the Finnish shim kits. And these are these are good for any Mosin Nagant platform, because as you know, the Finnish uh, military used Mosin Nagant Russian receivers and bolts. And they were told, each soldier was told to shim and um, cradle their rifles. So that involves disassembling the entire thing. And it, it is a kind of a tedious process, and he gives you extra shim, because you might need one in some places, you might need two. But the best part is, I don't have to explain this, he's got an instruction packet that this comes with. Okay, so it's got his contact info, and there's actually more information on the site, and I'll put the link to that in the description. So the step one, you know, it, what you're going to need, I mean, these are pretty clear and nice instructions. I did this years ago, and I ended up selling that 9130 that I accurized, and I'm going to actually do a video. I'm going to take a 9130 that I haven't really shot or anything, maybe this one. And I'm gonna see how it's shooting at 100 yards, and then we're gonna put the we're gonna use this accuracy kit. Hopefully, when it warms up, and I'm gonna show you that it actually works. Um, there's he's had 
thousands of customers over the years, and that's kind of a, a diagram of what the Russians and the Finns were like. Yeah, here's where you shim everything and all that stuff, but all those instructions are written in this packet that comes with basically every kit. Um, there's been thousands of people that are like, holy shit, I did not know this was possible to get that kind of accuracy out of a, you know, at that time, $80 rifle. So using, you know, standard LPS 147 grain surplus ammo at the time, and if you use, you know, wolf or brown bear, silver bear, or something like that, or you hand load, it's going to be even better results. So that is, um, so his website is actually called Millserp Accuracy Incorporated.com, and Millserp Accuracy is the name of his business. You can go there. Again, I'll put the link to that in the description. Um, these can go basically, I think, anywhere in the world, yeah, because they're not technically a gun part. They're just whatever. I don't know. Maybe maybe he's restricted, so I don't know. You might have to ask him. If you have that question, if you're from elsewhere in the world and you have a Mosin Nagant, maybe email him first, but I think he can ship worldwide. Last time I checked, I think that was it. But anyway, yeah, so Brian's got these. I think they're they're really cheap, too. Um, they're like 20 bucks for one kit, and again, you get extra shims and whatnot. 20 bucks to make a, make a rifle extremely accurate the way it was originally done is pretty damn good. And this is reversible. So this is like, if you want to restore it to the way it came out of the refurbish, refurb, refurbishment factory, you can just pop all these shims out, even though it's not advised, because then it's not going to shoot as well. So anyway, yeah, again, link to that in the description. Uh, Brian's a good guy. He's a really honest dude, and he, these kits are amazing. They're fantastic. They're worth every penny, and I'm not shilling for him because, I mean, obviously he sent me one set. I'm going to probably buy a few more, but I, he also sent me the set to make a video on to show you guys that it actually does work. So uh, we'll be doing that later on. That's going to be a long video. But, yeah, so I'm not shilling for him because he's paying me. I'm shilling for him because I believe in the product. That's how I roll. I'm just endorsing something that I believe in. You can ask anybody that's bought one of those kits. If you know somebody, they're going to say the same thing. So, anyway... Those are the kind of the three or four tips that I have, not really tips, I'm not advising you to do a couple of them, but that's what I used to do and I still do for Mosin Nagants to kind of bring it to the next level of riflery. And I have seen drastic changes in results. There's people that were posting on the gun forum with this, this kit and doing kind of the things that I did with the bolt and whatever that were, they went from, you know, two or three minute of angle, which is like a two to three inch group at a hundred yards to sub MOA. And that's just as good as like a new AR and whatever. And it's a big bore rifle. So Gets you competitive with modern firearms, and you've got a nice piece of history. So that's that. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. Again, go check out Brian's site. I'll post a link in the description. Get yourself one, two, three, or ten of these kits. They're invaluable. And uh, I really do appreciate you watching. If you consider becoming a supporter on Patreon, this is about the extent of my sponsorships for the channel. So I try not to, I try not to sell out and you know make it all about selling things unless I actually believe in it. So that's why Patreon is important. It helps me do videos like this and we go out and it pays for the ammo and I actually go out and shoot these, etc., etc. It's a dollar a month, five bucks a month or more. Gets you into my Discord server, which is pretty fun. We get a lot of cool things going on there and I get ideas from there and I, I'm making some videos on some ideas some of the people in Discord gave me. So sorry for rambling so much in this video. If you got any questions, I'll try to answer them. Again, I'm not a gunsmith. I'm not telling you to do any of these things to your rifle except this accuracy kit. Um, you're responsible for your own actions, blah, 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 blah. Sorry I have to say that so much, but the legal climate of the United States requires me to, in case you do something stupid, blow up, and, oh, he told me to do it. So that's why I have to do that. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. I really do appreciate it, and we'll see you on the next video.